Shalom everyone. Uh, I'm here to share with you a testimony to let everyone know that I am a cheerful receiver. And this video would be entitled uh, Tights Test. And if you've been following me on YouTube channel, it's about four weeks now that I did not make any video. And also, I did not even open my Facebook account for four weeks. And uh, for those of you who would like to know why, that's because I made a vow to the creator of heavens and earth that I'm going to seal my mouth to close my mouth until I will know what he have stored and keep for me with regards to my health uh, what this mind and I institute that uh, this is the reason why we have this GoFundMe fundraising and so we're gonna start this testimony what uh, where did I learn and how did I learn to give tithes? So I learned to give tithes from my parents and I do believe that my parents learned that since they were still one is Christian Pentecostal and from what I remember when my parents are still so active with their faith, their belief, our belief that my ma mama would roll out a our tithes and then when we go to a house of prayer she gonna brought our tithes and give it there my father on the other hand was a servant of our creator at that time when somebody gave their tithes to him he gonna get the tithes of that too and he's going to buy it uh, something a material that would help him increase his understanding with regards to our belief so he can share more our belief to others like say photocopying books because books in our level of C status quo uh, is not affordable especially that I came from a third world country and we're not that rich I would say and so my father is usually photocopy uh, references for, of our faith and then when finally I had a chance to have my own money and that was when I was in my college when I was become a recipient of the scholarship of the native of Bukit Nun because I'm one of them uh, I, I followed the example that I've seen with my father I tried to set aside my tithes and then use it to buy some materials that would increase my belief like one time I remember uh, there's this watchtower magazine I guess you're familiar with that one it's from Juba's Witnesses and then they have there in their magazine uh, says that if you give your donation to them they're going to give you a book and there I found out that there's a book of them that will help me have a better family in my time and so I remember giving them my donations to them so I can have that book and then uh, by the way why I believe in tithing tithing by the way is giving the 10% of our income or our increase and or some say that it's just for the animals or your plants your increase of your animals or your plants but I can explain later why I say a while ago is about income too and let's just go move forward why I do believe in giving our, our tithes okay so uh, I'll just try to give you one verse but I believe there's a lot of verses that talk about tithes in say the five book that was written by Moshi but if you try to look at that as, as always keep saying that is the word the instruction the teaching of our creator Moshe is just but an, a writer of that a scribe okay 
So I'll just give Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 13 to 14, uh, 12 to 13. Just kindly check your scripture. Okay. And for me, I do believe that tithing is a way of our creator to sustain the, the needs of of the need of the the needy uh both physical and spiritual okay why is it uh physical because if you try to look at that verse that i just gave a while ago it talks about giving our tithes to the stranger to the widow and the fatherless and also to the levites or levites and if you try to look at the, the first three the stranger the, the widow and the fatherless we can look at their lives when you say stranger for me the way i look at stranger they are the poor and then when we look at the widow and the fatherless start to look at this their, their situation their provider was gone was taken from them to death right and so father yeah looks upon them and he wants to sustain their life and since he is a great provider he i believe that he designed this tithing so he can provide for those people okay and if you try to look at the design why he created also or why he set apart the the levites the levites or the the sons of levi levi uh, levi and in Hebrew, by the way, they don't sound or uh, in English I as I. This the sound of that is E as in machine, like because that is uh, the vowel called kirik. Okay, okay, and then okay. Anyway, let's go move forward. Let's talk about our topic this time. Okay, so why did he decide that there is a Levites or a Levites or? A his purpose of that is so that his teaching, his instruction, his word can continue to flow to us, to sustain our spiritual need. And so, for me, tithing is all about provision or sustenance, okay? And that is why, finally, when I had a chance to had an opportunity to have my own uh, something I can give tithes of I practice tithing especially when the time when I finally got a job as a permanent public elementary school teacher in my home country Philippines I really keep I'm really a, a, what's this a tithe giver giving the 10 percent of my income and then because of that understanding that i have but i would also say that i have failure too with regards to this matter that i would like to share at the end of this video uh, not because i'm proud of it but hoping so all of us can learn out of that failure that i have i had okay so now uh, i meet some of the people who would like to say that uh we we should not practice tithing anymore because there's no more levites okay let's just use levites there's no more levites to give our tithes because if you try to look at the scripture we should give all our tithes to the levites okay no more levites this time so we shouldn't give our tithes anymore and another would say that in the book of revelation chapter 5 verse 10 if i'm not mistaken you can see there that all of us who will inherit eternal life will become priests and, uh, and kings. And so if we become priests and kings, so we should be the one who's going to ask for tithes to be given unto us, okay? And say we are the priests that came from the order of Melchizedek, okay? So we should, the tithes should come to us, should be given unto us, so we shouldn't give our tithes. Okay, now... Well ago, I said that my father gave tithes to the tithes that was given unto him. And the verse that you can find for that is it's in Numbers chapter 18, verse 26. 
Now, if you can see there, Father gave a command that even the Levites, after they gather the tithes, need to give their tithes too. And so for me, that is not an exemption that since we are a Levite and or we will become a priest and become a Levite, we're not going to give our tithes. Now, another thing that, that I'll try to try to look put emphasis of now if it as i said while well ago tithing is about sustenance and provision physical and spiritual okay now looking at the design of our creator why he designed that there were levites is for instruction and teaching right now in our present time there are no levites anymore but we are here that needs instruction needs teaching and so i do believe that we still need to give our tithes to so the work of the, the design the purpose of of having a levite would still continue and i believe that's true ministry okay and with that being said i would say we need to support ministerial work especially if those ministers that really do their full-time job they're not having any job to sustain for their needs we need to support them through our tithes okay now let's go move forward now uh what's this so as i said i am a tithe giver but there are moment of my life that i become a tight giver like holding tight of my tithes and i would say that started when i get married and but somehow, just listen to me, uh, gonna go how, but somehow it changed, okay? And that's the thing that I would like really to praise Father, not by my mind, but by his great work. And that's the thing that I'd like to share with you today. Okay, so when I get married, uh, the tithe giver, giving the 10% of what she had, become a tithe giver. Because when I become married, I become one with my husband. Now, when I, on the other side, grow up with the parents who are practicing this giving of tithes, my husband, on the other side, grew up into a, a parent, I would say, a mother that have this negative, uh, what's this? <laughs> I don't know what type of word I would use, but I couldn't blame here because what he's seen is is true it exists i would say and it goes like this so my mother-in-law would just say religion is just for money they just this this pastors just everything just get your money just how she, how she look at the scene and she would just say i i'll just go to church and give a dollar and that's it okay i couldn't blame her why because I personally have seen a lot of leaders of certain groups that they are going to gather. I could even really see in my home country that there's one leader there that gonna he gonna have this thing that sell all, all your properties and bring it, will gather and join together. And then after that, they're gonna make great mansion for themselves. And those poor members of them lost their everything and they, they, they end up getting wealthy and as we all know there are a lot of trouble in churches just because of money and i could even still remember this brother as he said in one of his messages he said that if you want to be rich uh choose among these three lords and he said gonna choose among a drug lord gambling lord or praise the lord and I could really say that there's a lot of people that utilize in religion and money and offerings and tithes to make themselves wealthy. And so I couldn't blame my mother. And so my husband, when we get married, and also my, what's this, my 10 years of being independency, if that is an English word, uh, taught me that I'm earning my money, I work for my money, and I don't want anyone to say, to mandate, to dictate what I'm going to do with my money. I'm going to be the one who's going to budget my money and do whatever I wanted to do with my money. And so marriage, 
adjustment. So when we get married, I don't want to be involved with my husband's money. I just hands off. You work, you decide what you want to do with your money. Okay. And then I observe that he's not giving bites. And so I said, I guess you need to give your bites. Okay. And then my husband will just say, but I don't have increase. And because, say, when we get married, we got a big trouble of our our say what's this our mortgage of our house and maybe some other time i'm going to share with you our love story and there i can share that because it might be it might take us so long to to go through with that okay so we have lots of debts we have five credit cards unpaid need to be paid and we have mortgage unpaid so you would say i have even on negative i don't have increase until one time uh, Rosh Hashanah of 2017 that's the the day of blast or some say from some translation says feast of trumpets I had miscarriage and when I reflect on what happened this is this the thing comes into my mind my husband keeps saying I don't have increase but if I tr try to look at the scene I am his increase because before I came into his life it's just one and when I came into his, li his life he become two and since I was uh, carrying a baby at the time he's almost becoming two but he still keeps saying he don't have increase and so I told it to him and said I guess we need to practice tithing because see you keep saying you don't have increase and the father take the increase of yours in my womb and I don't want the time will come that even I will be taken from you but yeah it did not work it did not work and then let me drink water okay and then at the time he's earning really good uh, amount of money i would say this is the thing that came into my mind to say okay but after we returned home from the feast of boots uh we went to Missouri at the time we faced three troubles as we look at the mailbox we've seen the the hospital bills bill of my miscarriage that's four thousand dollar and we we had the what's this a letter for the foreclosure of our house and it didn't end there when we went to his work first day he came back to his work my husband called me and he's crying and I don't know what's going on I thought he lost his job and said that his pay was end up to be half he he was was reduced was decreased and we're greatly in trouble because we're losing our house we need to look for some place to to to, to go and his and his his pay was decreased up to almost not to each half of what his receipt he was receiving at that time and so we got in trouble and then once again i told him i told you he keeps saying i don't have increase now he's taking your your you're almost taking your job we need to practice typing and then the enemy would really let us set us free from his chart. He really wants us not to give our tithes. We end up renting a house and uh, and live in a city that's really say we have a high rate of bills like water bills and we live in a house that I need to dry the clothes in the dryer about five times before it will be dried and so our bills and electricity is so high and with a leaking faucet and it's a really troublesome life and it's even get pregnant and yeah life really gets so hard and and when I told him to tie it's of course it's getting harder and I even remember him saying that if you really really want me to give our tights, then 
we need to sleep on the snow. And so when he said that word and I often seen a situation that really so hard, I decided to close my mouth and just entrust it to the father yeah, how he's going to work out our situation. Okay. Anyway, so my husband decided he needs to look for another child. And then Father uh, hears my prayer. One day while, while we're reading the book of Acts, my husband cried and I asked him why. And he said, I am so tight of giving my tithes. Whereas these people here that we're reading, they give everything just for the ministry to go on. And I said, yeah. And because of that, we are the recipient, the beneficiary of the generosity of that that old believer before and if they are not as generous as like that the ministry will not go on boost you that up to this time now we are able to enjoy the good news and, and that's our our that we have hope for eternal life and so he said the father yeah, that if father yeah, would grant him a job that's better than he had at the time he's going to practice giving tithes but yeah father yeah, is really compassionate i would say because even though we're failing at the time to give what he commanded uh, say uh he's so compassionate to us he make us be brought back to our house i already i guess i already shared a video about that why is that or how that happened and then he also gave the job that my husband asked for and then at the time my husband is traveling four hours every day to go to his work and he even make it so near to our house that he just need to travel two hours so from four hours become two hours but then once again this is a tight test fast come in after he just have his job i give birth to our son zephaniah and in just four days after that, I was diagnosed with a huge brain tumor. And so, supposedly at the time, it was that month that we should start because we do refinance of our house so we be able to get back to our house. It was supposedly at that month that we were going to start paying the mortgage of the house. And I gave birth to Zephaniah and I was diagnosed with tumor. And, and he got a new job, but he forgot his promise to gain the tithes because the enemy is really the one us to get up from his job of not giving our tithes. The focus was came on to saving my life, buying expensive essential oils, expensive supplements, going to a tribe, the anything that he can do just to save my life. So paying of the mortgage was forgotten. The promise of giving tithes was forgotten and came really to the point that i ended up going to surgery and i could really say that moment of my life is so critical and if father was not compassionate on us my word i said to him that if you don't keep not giving your tights time will come that even i will he will take from you and but yeah father is so compassionate he delivered me from death and bring me back to my husband sound and safe i know a doctor that we met last year to check up my mind and my eyes he really said that you are so fortunate because with this huge tumor that you have it's so impossible that i can see you talking i can see you walking and doing work and your mind functioning so well because usually people who have this end up couldn't talk anymore couldn't walk anymore because their nerve gets so damaged and some even lost their memory and couldn't remember anything anymore or worse a lot of them die but if i could really say father he loves me so much that i'm still here to to say this tem this testimony unto you and so and it's not just that after i get out from the hospital once again he gave my husband an opportunity of two great job that he needs to choose and once again he asked father yeah, to guide us which one he would go and ask to give the job to him and once again he remembered to promise that if he gonna 
gave the job unto him, the job that he his, he had now, he has now, he gonna give his tithes. And so after he had he get the job, I remind him of the promise to give the tithes. And praise yeah too, because at the time, timely a brother also uh was moved by father yet yeah, to make a study to share his study with regards to tithing and you can visit his work at Ilya ministry he had a, he has a great study on that you can visit it there about tithing and it really moved my husband to it helps me to help my husband be moved to to practice tithing and i would really say once again it's not me it's father's work so directly saying my husband starting to to give his tithes okay and then tithes test comes again feast of so called oh no i would really say father is really really what's this i couldn't i I know my word is not enough to, to to describe his great great love for us. I know a lot of you there look at COVID as something ugly, but for us, allow me to say this: that becomes a baraka, a blessing into our home, because as I said, we did not able to pay the mortgage from that August of 2018, and at the time. Uh, that was uh, 2019 when I get out from the hospital and so it's been a year that we did not pay the mortgage and prior to that we have been un there's a lot of mortgage that, that was unpa unpaid before that foreclosure notice that I, as I said a while ago that came in after we came back from the Feast of Boots 2017 and so there was a hearing hearing for the foreclosure of our house but then it ended up to become we're going to sell our house and from selling our house because covid came in it ended up that the hearing was delayed 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 and delayed until we end up going to filing bankruptcy and i would really say that it might not be a covid might not be a blessing for you to you but for us it was and it um, it was and yeah it was really a blessing for us because we didn't don't end up become homeless and praise for for the creator for doing that amazing work of our lives and then let's go move forward because the tides test didn't end there okay so we ended up have filed bankruptcy after the filing of bank bankruptcy succeeded we found out that we're going to pay a huge amount of money that almost leave us nothing okay and so when i found it out the thing that came into my, my mind is oh what a great tithes test can we continue now to give our tithes or not and can we really make it until one until we can finish it because that is five years we need to pay that for five years and so uh, somehow we continue to be able to give our tithes but once again another tithes test comes in and that was so called of 2020 okay so we really don't have so much to to pay for the stain of the feast of boots and we need to humble ourselves to Ilium ministry to make us one of the beneficiary of the feast fund and i find and i believe i already shared a testimony of that with my echo of 2020 feast of boots and then in that feast another tight test comes in and that's when my husband found out that we're gonna end up negative six hundred dollars with our mortgage of the following month and that is the month of november and so 
we need to decide and our decision was we were going to leave our tithes here and we're gonna leave whatever father will provide for us okay and so we get out from the feast with a negative 300 dollars on our mortgage and somehow father guide my husband that if we can delay our payments into the middle of november then because usually it's the time that they're going to take the mortgage then we're gonna be good and we'll be able to pay and he also moved a brother's heart and he sent us we sent us three hundred dollars and i would really say our tithes did not almost reach two hundred dollars and father gave us three hundred dollars and that's wow and so praise you for for help and let's go on and move another tight test comes in by december of 2020 my husband was tempted again not to give his tights and then finally i get fed up i said i'm already so tired of you like whispering tightening or not giving tights or not this is the end daddy i said if you're gonna decide that we're going to eat you're gonna use our tights I will not eat your tights. I'm gonna go away from you. Eat your own tights. I will not eat your tights. I said, it's better for me to stay away from you. So we'll just eat the curse of that. Because for me, Father had designed the tights to help the poor and the needy and the fatherless. And if you are going to eat your tights, you need to be a minister, a full-time minister, or you're gonna be a widow or a fatherless. Choose for yourself. I don't want, I, 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 I could be a minister if I am a man, but I am not. And so it is you. And so you need to decide, are you going to be a full-time minister? And if not, you have other option, a widow or a fatherless, because that is a design of father to sustain them. And so we had really had a great fighting struggle at the time, but I praise you that he stand at my side. He used a sister, sent us a track of their testimony to entitled Active Obedience that really moved my husband to stand with a stand that we're going to continue to give our tithes to our Creator. And then it didn't end there. Uh, but somehow I could really see the amazing work of Father April of 2021, the Feast of Unleavened Bread we could already see that our budget is getting shaky just just a little bit of uh over overspent and we're gonna be on negative and so i think of i remember of a, a verse that says that we can eat our tights i believe that's in deuteronomy 14 chapter chapter 14 verse 23 and that's you can eat your tights and the feast together with the widow, the Levites, and the fatherless, and the stranger, okay? So I just suggested to him, how about if we are going to use our tithes as our, our grocery so we, to eat in the feast, and then we are going to, so our, our gro budget for our grocery can be used for another needs, but then the changes i could really see the changes that father created into my husband he said no we're going to give our tithes we're gonna go to shalom assembly and we're gonna give our tithes there and we will leave by father's provision and my husband's praise becomes i give my tithes father i will provide for us and it's truly amazing and but then it didn't end there after we get out from the feast as you do the budgeting may 6th he found out we're going to be negative on our budget. And then, uh, three days after that, May 9, a sister called and we met them, their family, at the so called 2020. We spent it with at Stillbrook, Missouri, as I already said, with a ministry. And then uh, she called because her husband has seizure and in fact he had seizure at the first day of the feast and then because he had 
accident somewhere in the late of 1986 or 1987 and then uh, the doctor already give up on him and then when the doctor give up on him his daughter looked for some help in internet and he found they found this mind and eye institute and so they went there and her husband was helped and when her husband was helped she remembered me because right after the feast i contacted her because i there's really something in here that i that i said i don't want to stop learning from her at this feast i want to be continue to be contacted with her so i can learn more of, uh, of the things that he learned and so after the feast that was may 9 she called and introduced us mind and i institute and my husband asked her by how much is the cost and she she said for them it's seven thousand dollars that's to be paid for two years and so my husband's answer he know already we're going to be negative on our budget so he said no and we will not do that it's so expensive and so the sister said you can try go fund me just like what we did and my husband says no we will not do that and then so finally there's something in me that I really wanted to try to find out who knows you're gonna accept our insurance like that and it's good to find out rather than just to let go and then who knows you can be helped so we'll, I really tried to, to push him to just to check it out and then but then on that May 10 on that May 10 there is a there was a scheduled doctor's appointment for my prescription of drugs and so we went there and then when we went there my husband has forty dollars in his uh account in it in card and his twenty dollars in his pocket and he remembers oh no we're going to pay copay that's about fifty dollars and so he said uh the mortgage just was taken but our gas bill was still there about fifty six dollar dollars if i remember it right and so when my husband said oh my we're going to be negative but then anyway, we're just going to use this fifty dollars forty from the ATM card and ten from the cash in his pockets in his wallet and i just not going to let our account negative and then when he already gave the ten dollars and use the ATM card the ATM card says cannot be processed oh my the gas bill came in and we end up negative and so we need to ask that the the remaining forty dollars should be sent to us as deal okay and then we need to buy my prescription that is five dollars and so we end up leaving have five dollars and that's just may may 10 and so there's about more than a week before his pay day and so pushing him to inquire the mind and i institute is really so hard but somehow finally may 12 my husband decided to check it out okay and then uh, the conversation was was appointed on may 14 okay before that may 13 that sister of ours sent us a track again with their testimony and there there's the old song of i believe it's the moon song that says yeah will make a way when it seems to be the, no way he will be my guide hold me closely to his side and he gives me strength to face the day okay and so while he's reading that line i'm singing because i love that song and then the following day may 14 as my husband came from his work he asked me how i was how am i and i said i'm not feeling well and so he decided i'm going to make you juice and so he go to the refrigerator and asked me can i use these carrots and i said just leave something for us so we can survive for one week because there's still one week before his payday okay and then he found one uh he found beets one beet beets and he said can i use this beet and i said no we need that to survive next to it said, okay how about just the leaves said, okay you can use the leaves and then he said he found the apple one apple and he said can i use this apple no 
I'm going to divide that into four parts and that would be Zephaniah's snack for the next week. And then Zephaniah comes in and he asks for a bar and my husband asked me, do we still have bar for Zephaniah? And I said, we have one, but I don't want you to give it to Zephaniah this time. We will give that to him next week so we can survive. And then I need to cook rice. And in really our hard time at the time, we didn't able to buy rice. And in fact, the rice that I'm using at the time was the pack of rice that a sister gave to me since the, the feast. That was a leftover from the feast. A sister gave me a pack of rice and then this is the rice that we survived after that time. And then I guess there's one also pack of rice that we left from our own rice and just just the thing that that was just a two package of rice that we used to survive and so when my husband looked at the amount of rice that was left there we've seen that two-thirds of it we used already and we still have one week to survive and so my husband asked me can that rice survive for one week for, for until the payday looking at it i said I know it can, but is there anything I can do? So I put my two hands in the rice and said, rice survive. And my husband laughed and he said, I gonna go out to mow the lawn after I did that. He usually didn't mow the lawn on preparation day. Usually he helped me cook or clean the house. But at the time, he, there's something that tells him that he wants to mow the lawn. And then I reminded him that there will be a phone call by five o'clock. And then he said, I'll do that after the phone call of the Mind and I Institute. So when we received the call, so my question to them was, would I be helped when I really have the desire to be set free from my anti seizure medicine because of the side effect, with, because it really makes me wobbly. And there were even times that when I'm working, I can just work for 20 to 30 minutes and I feel like shaky and tired and I need to rest maybe up to that amount of time to until I can go back to work again and it's really quite hard. And of course, we believers, we know that time is come that we can't buy anymore without the mark of the beast and I want help by that time. I want to be free by any medicine, I would say. Then, uh, another thing is that I asked is, can I be helped with my low vision? And then, so the answer with regards to my, to if I could be set free with my, my, my seizure is would greatly depend on what was left. It would, what, what's the situation of say my brain and, and and but then they said that the focus on those people who have traumatic experience or accident like that or brain injury and then with regards to my eyes he said that the focus on who have cross eyed and lazy eye and then i remember the doctor's word i believe i already shared this testimony that the doctor that checked me up last may 20 she, he couldn't understand why he said that the, my left eye possessed the brightness my right eye has the dullness but it's my right eye that can read whereas my left eye couldn't read and he called my left eye lazy eye and so i told that to the one who who gave us the call and then he said yeah we might get help we, we might can help you with your left eye and then of course we asked will you receive insurance and he said no and then I ask, and then we ask about the price because there's a check up before we co before they can decide if they can help me or not. And we went, so we ask about the cost, and that is one thousand six hundred seventy five. And how much money we have at the time? Five dollars. Went negative in our ATM card, and so my husband's decision is a no. He just waited to turn the phone to be turned off and told, and said just for politeness well think think about that but after he turned up the phone say, he said to me mommy we can't afford that it's a no and just the five years of our bankruptcy that we're struggling with and that is 1675 where are we going to get that money and so 
tears flowed through my eyes. I'm a tear. I, I um, was this a crying lady. <laughs> tears is relief. I remember that if you watch my video about my echo of the feast of a living bread this year, let's say what. When a brother asked what is my best, I could do this. I'm best at crying. <laughs> and so I cried. And then my husband hugged me and asked me, are you depressed because you're disappointed to be helped? And I said, how could I not be? Starting when I learned that uh, I lost my original skull and I have this titanium plate now. And then when I learned that I couldn't be set free, what anti-seizure medicine that's when i had seizure last last year may 4 and when i had learned from a doctor that uh the doctor that we checked up last year in november that my eyes couldn't be helped with any eyeglasses no matter how high grade it is because the situation of my eyes is that my vision was scattered and i need some light that can focus so i can i can see better and then when I learned also that the side effect of this anti-seizure medicine that I'm taking is not safe for for a baby so I can be pregnant and expect to have a healthy baby like like that and that no more midwives that will accept me to do home birth and learning the thing about vaccine now i really don't want to do birth in hospital i really want that if i give birth to a child i want to do it home birth because i know the healthiest way to have a child is to do home birth and so when i learned all these things it really sapping me up with so much depression and but what can i say what i can do i know father is so good and so kind to me I believe if I gonna picture, make a picture of my situation at the, the time with what I want to, it's really the perfect situation of the Israelite, like in a ravine with Pharaoh and his soldier behind their back and reads in front of them. I do believe what Father did is the best thing he can do to give me his best. And it's a, I, I just need the pricing for that matter, even though with what I have now, it is already the best. And so my husband told me, I guess you need to get out so you can breathe fresh, fresh air so you can say, forget your, what you feel. I said, yeah, I guess I need to go out so somehow I can get some sunlight too. So we get out and he go on with mowing the lawn. But then my depression hunt me there. I and Zipaniah were enjoying sitting in a chair. Then all of a sudden, my child ran so fast going straight to the road until to the point that my eyesight couldn't reach anymore i don't know where he did he go you know he just lost with my eyesight and i tried to walk as fast as i can to reach him out but yeah i'm not that really that strong now and with, with fear and nervousness that i feel oh my brushing going to the road and then my husband found me looking for him and he know i'm so scared and he told me don't worry zip and i came to me here because he get the lawn mower and so with with what i feel i feel like i will collapse to the ground so i decided i can stay here anymore i need to go up and even struggling to go up to, to to go to our house and go to the bed when i was still lying on the bed Father brought me back to those days when there's uncertainty, there's hopelessness in my life. And that was when I'm about to enter high school and my mom already told me because she just gave birth to a child and she's the one who's providing for our need. She already asked me that I need to stop going to school because she can't provide anymore. And then in that hopelessness, I remembered that I remember they're teaching to me when I was a child that Father Yeh owns everything. He's my father. I need not to be scared because my father owns all the wealth of the world and great soul, mighty soldier. And that is his messenger, his Malachim, you know, as angel. And they are so strong to keep me safe. And yeah, that that every time I see money in, see, in the mall and the cashier counting money, came into my mind and so I convinced my mother, Mama, you told me Father 
owns the world, right? So he owns all this money, right? And so if you told me that I am his daughter, I gonna ask my father to give me money and send me to school because I really want to finish my high school. And my, not just my high school, but my college. I want to finish my study because I want to create a change of the situation where we are in, where we need to work for Shabbat so we can just bring food to our table. And there were even time that we have this roof that kind of, when the rain comes in, we go dripping like that because we have this type of shrub that we just used as our group or a bamboo, just doing like that, the bamboo, and then when it gets old, this dripping and it's gonna get wet. I want to change this thing. And so my mom, my mama, couldn't say any word. And so he, and she ended up to, so what's this, to accompany me to go to enroll me for high school. And amazing thing, uh, the registrar, when he learned that we can pay the money, he, she was reminded that her husband told her that they're planning to create a scholarship for someone who's entering high school or really struggling to pay the tuition fee like that. And I was... And at the time, there's really like uncertainty if I'll be the one who'll be taken because they will just go to take two scholars. And it's amazing that it was, I was one who was be chosen to be the recipient of the scholarship. And the thing brought back to my mind and it now grows to the level of, at the time, I just learned this cashier counting money. And now I already learned Bloomberg, Bill Gates, Trump, diamonds and gold and came to my oh no my father owns all the money all the wealth of the world bloomberg's bill gates name all the billionaires the trillionaires of the world that money that we have that belongs to my father and what is this just seven thousand dollars and it's just one thousand six hundred seventy five dollars if it is real if if, if it is his real that I can go there because he keeps something for me, stored something for me in there, in that mind and I institute, I need to go there and he can provide for me. When I was in that mood, my husband came in and shouting, rejoicing for joy. <laughs> I don't know why. He said, Mommy, hallelujah. And I said, why? And I said, you are loved by Father. <laughs> and he said, because he answered your prayer he provided and he said when i was mowing there the low at the loan in the loan i found ten dollars so it seems like ten dollars is a i need 165 1675 dollars right but then i remember that the prayer that i pronounced with the rice rice survive we have now ten dollars with the five dollars with fifteen dollars to serve so to so well so the rice will survive at indeed and indeed it really survived and yeah it's amazing and let's go move forward okay so when the thing happened i said i shared to him my thoughts my reflection my meditation while i was on the bed and told him i guess we need to try the suggestion of the sister that we're going to make go fund me and we'll just go it this way if no one will donate, then that is Father's way. He don't want us to go to Mind and I Institute. But if he, he wants us to go there, then he's going to provide you through this GoFundMe, okay? And then, funny thing, the, the finalization of that thing finally came in on May 16th. And then, just right after my husband finished doing this go find me he came into my room a room and said mommy you already have a donation of 40 dollars from a brother that i don't even know and he came, oh father i must be saying that i gonna go to the mind and i institute and then he came in the next time he came into the room he said you know another donor of a thousand dollars i said oh wow that's so huge Whew. And he said, name brother, I guess you know already him. And I said, could a single man have a concern for the trouble, the struggle of married life? How could he understand that 
to have that feeling to help because because the way i look at single men not married they, they don't have this kind of trouble in their life they're just enjoying life they have their parents to help them like that and to help me that way i really thought oh wow i never expect all of you who cares to donate here and, and i'm not gonna ask you for more donations but i just like to let you know that i am a cheerful receiver and it's really so i couldn't find the right word to say that i'm so thankful that i am so precious in your heart that you respond to the call of father yeah, as he knocks your door to help me with the situation that i was in i still don't know how this testimony this testimony of my healing would really go through i just hope and pray that the prayer of elder robert last piece that we're gonna witness another miracle will become true that that word comes from Fabia that he's pronouncing a prophecy in my life because that would be really great and so amazing to tell and I truly love to share with that and so let's just go and move forward so anyway so and the following day so when finally just a little amount so, I, so we can reach 1675 oh my father is this a little amount that I can go there and finally within 24 hours all that we need 1675 was in hallelujah and thank you so much i can't thank you enough and so after that by the way that's that may 16th when when the this this fundraising started already i said i gonna close my mouth close my tablet and no new no video yet for youtube channel because I'm going to fully trust this matter unto you, Father, yeah, so that you can work what you really want for my life. And no, and anyway, let's go move forward. So on May 17th, all the, the necessary amount that we needed, so I'll be checked with Mind and I Institute. By the way, you can go to the website and you can check too. And then uh, there's there's something that came into my mind and it goes like this. What if the Mind and I Institute after my checkup couldn't help me? And I fought back. I said, then what's the problem? It's Father Yahoo did this thing. Then he gonna stop his donation. So I'll not be put to shame for these people who help us. And then funny thing, on May 18th, the donation stopped. And then I'm planning to do this testimony and I said I'm going to end my testimony by saying that my father yeah, continue to help us to pass all the tight tests that's on our way. And then on May 19, this thought come in. How about if you're gonna go to Mind and I Institute and then you're gonna be helped, but then the donation stop and you're gonna be left if if it would be like the situation of your brother that needs seven thousand dollars to finish the treatment then you're gonna be left with seven thousand dollars to be paid off within two years how you are going to do that that's big amount for you who, or who who is in a bankruptcy that almost left nothing to sustain for your need and i said oh my it's a big problem that could really be a great bite Best. and so i guess we need to pause a little while and then i thought back by the way i said well this is father's work if if that is the case then he will continue to pour out more donations and sure enough more donations come in until after this time and thank you thank you so much i can really pay you back with this thing other than a prayer that father may become uh compassionate unto you too and gonna look upon you and pour down abundance and make you a more than a conqueror with everything that you're struggling with and with, with what you're desiring with and fill your home with samak and shalom and that means gladness and peace as they say but i believe shalom is more than dust and so yeah and me my words came true because i truly know it's him who can really make this word come true into your lives okay so by the way we really 
uh, I thought my vow of sealing my mouth would end by either May 28th or May 31. But then when we can choose which day are we going to pick up May 28th or May 21, I said to Father, let it be unto your hand which day are you going to pick up. And when we already called for the mind and I institute to set an appointment for us, we found out that we had a lot of patients that up to August, we are fully booked. And so I said, oh no, I'm going to be sealed my mouth until August, until it opened my, my tablet, my Facebook account, until August. And then, this is so entertain us. But I'm going to check on this back out. And he found one, just one, and that's June 10. Somehow when we went there, Praesia, they said that greater chance we can help, they can help us. And I found out that there's great and amazing work that Father did for me. He's, the doctor said he checked up my eyes and look at the nerves and he said there's a scratch on my nerve and there's still a lot that was left for me, especially that it can really be seen with my, the way I can, that I can still read do it's quite far like the one that I'm reading is on the other side of the door and the other one is on the other side and so and he said he can disagree the chances of being helped is really so great and yeah the slides that they gave to me really makes me sleep too because there were times they were struggling to sleep and amazing because that was named Alpha and Omega and I believe Alpha and Omega that comes from the Hebrew supposedly the original words that, words that I use for that is Aleph and Tau and that is not the beginning and the end but that is the beginning and uh, mark and with even more the strength and the mark because Aleph is symbolized the, the thing that symbolizes Aleph is ox and ox is brings a symbol of strength and that's why that's also the very letter that's been used for the word Al mm. Another meaning for that is leader too, so leader of the mark or the strength of the mark. And so that's an amazing thing that's happening. And before I gonna end this video, I said a while ago there will be uh, three things that I said my failure to uh, tithing. And prior to that, by the way, on what's, what was the day? Uh, before that sister called up called up to let us know about the mind and I institute uh, we learned that on May 6 we're gonna end up in negative in our budget and then my husband wants to go grocery in that May 9 before a sister called up and I really push him to go I, says, I told him to daddy before you're gonna go to grocery please send our tights to anyone whom you decided to send our tights and then because of this reason so i have i could remember i know there might be a lot of things that may failure with the tights but these three things really really is the one that give me strong lesson learning that makes me help me to stand the tights testing i would say and that this is all about in this all three this is common thing and that is to go grocery before you give your tithes. And I guess the essence of the thing, if there is good things that you need to do, be steadfast to do it. Because if you will not, the enemy will come in and put the obstacle and you're going to be in a struggle to do the thing, the good thing that you're, you're, you, you want to do. And here, here it goes. And I believe I already shared this first, the first one. So it was my 24th birthday, my, my 24th birthday is coming and I have my, it's payday and my friends want, at the time it's a celebrating birthday and my friends wants me to, to prepare something for them for my birthday and I don't have enough money and so I decided I'll borrow my tights and so we went to the grocery store buy something to prepare for my birthday and when I get my wallet to pay the payments, I found out that my wallet was not there. It was, it, it fell, okay. And when, 
I don't want to share any more about the thing because I already shared that. Just to make this so short, that the tights uh, that, that wallet smoke was retained to me, and I really remember praying at the time that I've seen Father yeah, forgive my sins, and if it's your desire that you're gonna use that money because in that money is my money to for my sustenance for for the uh, for the time until I have my pay and my tithes. Now, if you're going to give that to someone because your tithes is in there together with my money for grocery, then give it to the one that needs it the most. But if you've seen that I need it the most from than the people that, that someone who can pick my my wallet, then me return it to me. An amazing father returned my wallet to me. That someone who picked it up was so kind that he returned it to me. Okay. And amazing because the one who picked it up is just a young guy and you know young guy he loves to drink and it's that's a good month to spend with his friends but it was so well taught to be to retain money something that was not yours and yeah that was that happens okay and that was what happened and the second one is I guess it was my first time to come back to join my brothers who call their name the call the, who call the name of our creator Yahweh and then he had a lot amount of money at the time and I overspent again with my grocery and just thinking I'll not give my whole tithes because anyway I have so much money at the time. I'll just I'll take something of my tithes and not I will not give my whole tithes so I can be I will not struggle with my budget. But then when we are already packing our things because we are riding just one passenger and we, we rent uh, like a jeepney and all of us are going to ride there. I said, I'm about to take my fare. I found out that I lost my pouch. And once again, I repented for my sin and Father returns my, my pouch. But the third time, it was December and you know December there's a lot of Christmas sale and so I was thinking I had my money with me and I still have my tights with me I did not give my tights yet I went to the grocery store and when I went there I'm tempted to buy this thing that I'm looking for but my money and that I have is not enough to see to sustain my need within until I have my pay pay and so if i gonna buy that item i need to borrow my ties to have that item and i decided to do it that way and when i get out from the groceries uh from the store when i get out there i'm still carrying my pouch where in my my budget for for the whole month is there was there and then because I bought a lot of things and giving two plastic bags and my backpack, I decided I'm gonna put my my pouch into my backpack so I can carry these two plastic bags and I'm just going to get into the we call it on multi cab like a passenger multi cab, and then with just a very few minutes, a minute or two, that I just put the pouch there in the pocket of my backpack and I get inside the multi cab. I, then I found out my the pocket of my backpack was was already open and my pouch was no longer there uh, oh my i really need to scream to the drive to stop because it's about to go we're about to go to stop because i don't know what am i going to pay as fare good thing when i want to get out try to look if it is fail on the road but it's not there and I just learned that there's a lot of robbers and pickpocketers there in that area. And so, because I did not experience the thing all throughout my life. It just happened at the time when I steal my tights. <laughs> I would say, or I borrowed my tights. And so, good thing when I tried to put my pocket on the pants that I'm wearing, I found out that I have enough coins to have a fare to go back to my brothers and sisters where they are living and so I went to them and asked for some help and they helped me so I can be able to go to our house and I need left no choice but go to my mom and ask her to help me to survive within the month 
And so that's my failure of my practicing these types. But it really gives me so much lesson and so much learning that enough. And that's the reason why I keep pushing to to really practice typing. But because yeah, really, uh, I really experienced the thing. And let's go back to the thing. Uh, what what happened when we continue to practice our tights by the way uh, because it didn't end there so the, the schedule was moved to uh, June 10 right and then the following week that was the weekend of the holiday of memorial my mother-in-law came to our house and usually my husband do grocery on a day before the preparation day so I have something to prepare for Shabbat and then so with the grocery and the king that the, and the thing that I'm preparing for Shabbat, expected that our refrigerator will be full if we have enough. Okay, or just enough to say full. Okay, and then my mother-in-law came to our house and he she also do grocery. So what happened? Our refrigerator was so full that I need to take out some of the item outside. And then my husband found out that the cantaloupe that he bought is so ripe already and he asked me why i did not prepare or slice that cantaloupe and i said because your mom bought us watermelon too and i want the watermelon to be finished we that we would finish eating the watermelon before i'm going to open the cantaloupe because they're of the same kind and so he said so we need to hide this in the refrigerator he said and i said look if you can put it there because in the morning i found out that it's so overloaded with lots of beraka blessing in there and so he opened and he couldn't put it there and so he started saying why is this woman trying to compete that compete with us in buying food and i remember him or the thing every time we are, we are already struggling after we give our tithes my husband has to pray praise this is really the, his common praise song. i give my tithes father i will provide for us and i was gonna end up calling to him malachi 310 and i would say yeah because he said try me and see if i'll not open the door of blessing door of heavens and pour out blessing upon you so that there will be no room in your store storage so to store my baraka okay so let's just say it like that and so when my husband said that i said that is because you give your tithes and that is why there's no more enough place in our storage our refrigerator to put in our baraka and we all could have a good laugh and it did not end there we even have a trip going to lake geneva and get a chance to to taste their yummy yummy ice cream there if you're here in the United States, try to go there. Their, their ice cream is just so yummy. And so this is, I believe, the end of my long testimony of uh, tides, test, and try for yourself. Try Padilla. We should have tried him in other matter, but in this, this matter, I think, he really said, try me. So we need to try him. Try to look at uh, Malachi 310 and you can see it and I would really say if you don't try it you will never experience it and so we need to try so you can experience and so thank you so much of your time uh, I'm not asking for more donations but if you want to do I'd like to let you know that we are a cheerful giver and a cheerful receiver too thank you so much until next time, yes, we shalom.